Hey, what's up guys, it's Eli Knight, and I'm here with the beautiful Anya, and we're making a video today about one of the lowest percentage submissions that gets a bad rap, and it's the Americana. I thought we would talk about, from basic, kind of fundamental mechanics of Americanas, why they fail a lot of the time, how we can make them better, how we can improve them positionally, and everything else. Um, so, we're gonna get started. Uh, by the way, if you like the content on this channel and you want me to keep making these videos, let me know about it. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, share this video with your friends and all that. So anyway, let's get started. The basic application of Americana looks like this, typically from mount or side control. If, we, if I have top mount on Anya right here, then usually the weak one white belt learns Americana something like this. We push the arm to the ground, we get this nice 90 degree bend in the arm. I'm gonna put my elbow into the wedge of her neck and get this perpendicular kind of grip across here like this. All five of my fingers here are going across. We'll talk about why not a thumb grip in just a moment. And then my second hand can either, either go palm up or palm down. Palm up is a little better typically because I can crawl underneath. We get this nice perpendicular bend of the arm. I double wrist grab here. So sometimes this is also called a double wrist lock. And then once I have my own wrist and her wrist, I'm gonna try to rotate her hand away like that while I'm revving it pull my elbows in tight and squeeze here like this, get some kind of an anchor point over here with this leg. I like to shoot the leg back like this or pinch the elbow and knee together through her head and arm. And then I'm gonna put my head down toward the grip configuration and scrape her knuckles down this way parallel to her body. So if we picture another analogy that we use a lot of time in Jiu-Jitsu is like this is a paintbrush, this is the, the handle of the paintbrush and these are the bristles. And I'm painting a parallel stroke right beside her body all the way down to her toes. Now, the inherent difficulty with this, why this fails a lot of the time, is because if Anya wants to uh, defend against this, she just has to look at where my weight is distributed. I'm so top heavy in this quadrant of her body and I'm tying my arms up. So a lot of times if she goes to bridge in this direction here, like this, I'm gonna simply fall off here and I might lose my configuration. If I don't wanna fall off, I at least have to let go of the grip that I have to base out. So that's why the necessity of having an anchor point on the opposite side is so important. So if I'm gonna attack this arm over here, I wanna anchor on this side and I'm dropping my hip in, I'm pointing my toes and I'm flaring my ankle out to the side. So you can already see how her leg is compromised. If she wants to bridge right now, it's very difficult, right? The next thing that's difficult too, that she can make difficult for me to finish this, is if she takes her right hand and puts it against my tricep over here and starts to shove my arm off this way. So I can't allow that to happen either. So that's another reason why now I'm gonna also drop and squeeze my lats and triceps kind of together. And then from here now, it's a lot more difficult if she wants to do either of those things in the time that it takes me to break her arm. Now, when we talk about breaking the arm, what exactly is the Americana attacking? The Americana is attacking, um, typically we describe it as a shoulder lock because anytime you take a 90 degree bend of an arm, we're not attacking a hinge joint any longer, we're attacking the ball and socket joint, so we're attacking the shoulder. The problem is a lot of the time, the shoulder has a lot of muscle mass and it's got a lot of range of motion in it. So the pressure has to travel somewhere down the length of the arm. So a lot of the cat catastrophic injuries you see off of an Americana are breaking of the humerus or some kind of like dislocation or sublux subluxation of the elbow. So it's kind of weird that a uh, shoulder lock would cause those kind of breaks, but it typically does. So the typical application from the mount, that's a good one, but who's gonna just let me sit there and push their arm to the floor? So let's make this a little better, right? So if I wanna get her arm isolated, I'm gonna start with her head. So a good maximum in jiu-jitsu is if I want the arm, I'm gonna bug the neck. If I want the neck, I'm gonna bug the arm. Different ways that we can look to get her arm into play where I can start isolating it. Um, we can start something like a smother from here and she'll start to try to push and wedge out and stuff and then I can start swimming inside. I can start a punch choke, which I have other videos on if you wanna see that, but essentially a punch choke is where I create a little bit of gap here by her neck, my bicep is on one side of her throat. I'm gonna take my fist and place it on the other side of her carotid, grab my own wrist and squeeze here. She doesn't like that. So when she goes to grab and pull away, I can now pull her arm separated from her body. When I get her arm separated from her body somehow or another, I'm gonna take this free arm of mine and I'm gonna cause like a little seesaw block on her bicep here. So with that seesaw block, now I've kind of isolated her arm. She wants to raise it up. I press my hand down. She wants to take her arm down. I push my elbow to the floor. Now I can reach over and I can grab her wrist sometimes. You can also do this little Indiana Jones trick where I replace my forearm with my knee real quick, grab, and then take it back. That's a cool little trick too. So now I need to get that hand to this hand. The problem is that if I try to just feed it, she's gonna resist here, right? Though the opposite holds true too though. If I pull her arm away from her body, she's gonna muscle it back in. So that gives me the slingshot that I need to be able to capture. I'm gonna grab my own wrist, 
When I feel like I've got to stabilize, I'll switch off to a two on one on the wrist. Now I'll slide underneath and we'll go here, right? Now I've got this Americana set up essentially, but I can't finish it while her head is still on top. So for her to prevent my Americana, a lot of times she'll staple her head to the floor and that won't allow me to get my arm out. I can wedge her elbow to her nose, but only somebody with really tight, messed up shoulders is that gonna get a tap. So what I need to do now is I need to do like a one-handed push-up. I'm gonna leave my weight to my left, do like a one-handed push-up, slide this out from the back of her head, stuff that elbow back into the wedge of her neck, get my double wrist lock here like this, rev and turn her, fit, her hand palm facing away from me like that, and then shoot my anchor point, drag, and get the finish there again. So there's how we can get that Americana from mount with or without the head control. Now, uh, another good place for, for Americana to happen is from side control. And side control, sometimes, uh, uh, one of the main common ways that somebody's gonna resist me from side control is if I'm pressuring down on them, is for them to create frames in the different useful wedges of my body, the two typical ones. If I'm underneath her head and I've got some kind of typical side control like this, is for her to frame against my neck, right? So when she goes to frame against my neck here like this, sometimes that gives me what I need uh, to be able to isolate that arm. So how are we gonna do that? Um, I'm gonna first isolate the near side by hitting it here and cutting that arm out of my hip. And once I have that arm cut away from my hip here like this, and so she's not framing, but she still has to frame inside my neck here, I'm gonna bring this arm across like this, tuck my elbows in tight, and then from there, I'm gonna put my radius right under here under her tricep, and I'm gonna drive forward. So her frame now that was against my neck is across my collarbones. I'm using my collarbones to force her forearm to the floor and my forehead to the floor. And so once I have that there, this free hand is gonna come up and inside. This is all I really need. I could just do this little Wing Chun kind of block here like this. I don't have to fully grab it because that's awkward. So once I have that wedged in, now as I go to sit back, I can rotate my, my hands to the right orientation here. Now to finish that, everything else holds true. I'm still painting the stroke parallel to her body. I'm keeping my head down and I'm gonna finish here. Biggest thing from here is not to allow this elbow to float, not to allow her to bring her arm uh, closer to her body or close the wedge of her armpit. And so keep my elbows squeezing in nice and tight, revving her arm and then keeping my head down to finish that lock. Um, I can also hit this from the guard, right? So in the guard, the way that this materializes a lot of the time is uh, similar to like a, there's two different kinds of mirror lock, which is a little bit lower percentage, especially no knee, but it's possible, obviously. And then um, another one that I call the slot machine, I don't really have a better name for it, it's a modified mirror lock. So once we get here, sometimes if I've wrapped her up on this side, maybe this came from kind of a waiting scar setup, but I'm gonna punch through a, kind of a makeshift uppercut, and as she pulls, tries to start pulling that arm out sometimes, and I lock right there on the hinge of her elbow. And so now from here, I'm just kind of double uh, reinforcing my grip, and I'm gonna bring my knee inside, like uh, I'm gonna do a scissor sweep. But then from here now, I'm gonna push this knee and I'm gonna extend my chest back away from her. And depending on how much she has it bent, it may be a straight or bent arm. Sometimes it'll bend all the way up and it'll look more like an Americana. Sometimes it's more straight like an arm crush. But either way, we're still accomplishing kind of that same thing. Now, <clears throat> something else that happens sometimes, if I wanna start setting up an arm bar, uh, just a straight arm bar from the guard, a good way for me to do that is to get her chin and her elbow lined up. So if I can get this look where her shoulder is sticking out, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop up and I'm gonna bite that shoulder. Once I have that shoulder bitten here like this, a lot of times she realizes, oh no, this arm is in danger and I'm close to getting that straight arm lock. So she'll start coming in and trying to protect that arm, right? As she goes to do that, if I can get a hold just of her wrist and her hand and turn her thumb, this direction here, then all of a sudden now I'm gonna bite harder with my legs and I'm gonna push and I'm gonna pull her thumb to the floor here this way. Now, if she doesn't like that, she can start straightening her arm out and then she's gonna start giving me the straight arm bar. So that's kind of the response that I want. I want to, to get this and have her start trying to fight away so that I can start getting around for either my arm bar or my triangle. But if she's very stubborn and she knows if she straightens her arm, she's in trouble, she'll let me, she'll take it so far that she has no choice but to tap. An underrated place to get an Americana, in my opinion, is the crucifix. Now, you can't, the, I'm not gonna say you can't, but it's a it's really lower percentage to get it strictly from the back position. But from the crucifix, though, um, it's actually a pretty good place to get it. So if we wind up in a crucifix somehow, right? So we're here, um, and I, I have another video, of course, on how to get into the crucifix and different submissions from the crucifix, including this one. But I wanna include this one since we're talking about Americanas. When I get to the crucifix position, I have the seatbelt kind of established like this, and I've got her arm on this side trapped, typically with my bottom leg. 
From here, she can either straighten her arm, bend her arm, branch up or branch down. Um, a lot of the time, if she's just trying to pull her arm straight in, that's gonna give me the branch up option that's gonna lead to my Americana with my legs. So then from here now, I'm gonna bring this top leg over, I'm gonna reach and grab her wrist, and then I wanna get this, this uh, wrist tucked behind my knee. Once I have it there, if I can get my toes in front of my shin on this side, that's gonna give me really good torque to be able to get that Americana right there. So that's another good place to hit it from is getting from here like this. I'm gonna bring the leg over, grab that wrist, put it in the back of my knee and try to get my toes in front of my shin on that side. I'm gonna keep the seatbelt tight on this side here, rotate my knees to the upward direction and pull her head away from that arm. And that's gonna get a really strong uh, finish right there. I'm kind of moving into this territory of this, this crucifix, which kind of starts to build into the same kind of uh, framework as, uh, as a scarf hold. Scarf hold, um, if we get to this uh, case of Katami here, like this, whether it's broken scarf or standard scarf, right? Either way, I have one of the most immediate um, routes that I have to be able to get this Americana is, or one of the most immediate summations that I have from the scarf hold is the Americana. Because from here, now, if I just try to push this down and she's very strong, we're gonna be in an arm wrestling match that I'm not likely to win right there. So the way that I like to do it instead is I'm gonna crank on her head a little bit here like this. And a good place to do it is when she's actually hugging me. If she's hugging me and I don't have access to this arm, I'm gonna do like a heel hook on her elbow. So I'm gonna put my snuff box underneath that elbow. I'm gonna S grip my hands. I'm gonna to try to put her elbow on her nose. She doesn't like that pressure. She starts to straighten that arm. And I tuck my arm inside. Now I'm gonna start pushing this down and I'm gonna put my leg on top of her arm now. Now I'm gonna cross my two ankles here. I'm gonna go high up on her head, not on her neck, but high up on her head, pull away, and then start doing like a technical stand-up or standing up in base by dragging my butt back. It's a lot of torque. There's no way somebody's shoulder is gonna withstand that even if they're a contortionist. So that's another really good place to get it. Now, something that you'll see, almost like a mirror image in the upside down here, is if she is top side control on me, and Anya and I actually have a wonderful instructional at BJJ Fanatics that I'll put a little thing over here on the side um, where you can get that. And it's all about escaping and attacking from bottom side control. So, you see how I work that? That's good, she tells me I need to do that one. So when we, she's top side control on me, and we're like this. I've got myself into a bad position because she's got my arms isolated, my frames are gone. Then um, a way that I can attack from bottom, one of the first immediate attacks is Americana. But it's a South Americana, um, props to uh, Squid Vicious for naming it that. But when I go here, I'm gonna frame, I'm gonna put my biceps, since I can't get my frame out, I'm gonna put my bicep on her face. I'm gonna bridge hard this way here, and then as I cut back, I wanna try to roll her. And if she bases, if I can get her to base like that, now the trap is set. I'm gonna block here my hand to her wrist. As she goes to pull her arm back, she runs into my leg, and I'm gonna fold it back over this way. So you see how my leg comes from the back, laces through, and then I'm gonna cross my ankles right there by her wrist. Same thing, the same way we finished from whenever I was on top scarf hold, now we're the same, it's just mirror image. And I'm gonna pull her head toward me this way, and I'm gonna turn my knees back toward her butt, and it's gonna rip her arm off, just like that. Um, so this is by no means a comprehensive list of everywhere that Americana exists, but it's a pretty good smattering from different positions, good and ostensibly bad positions sometimes. And uh, the main framework that I wanted to give you about this work, um, entries into it, but mostly about how to finalize the braking mechanics, how to seal all those spaces that create opportunity for the person to escape or count on my Americana. That's why Americanas fail so much, is they, that people often get a little bit too rambunctious and a little bit too excited and they grab hold and they try to break and they don't solidify the position. That's why they fail, not because it's an inherently bad submission. So anyway, I hope that you like this video. I hope that it gives you some useful tips if you're already pretty good at Americanas and good at submissions. And if, it, if you've never seen Americana before, I hope this is a great intro for it. Um, thank you guys for watching, like, subscribe, share, all that stuff that I said in the beginning. Thank you, Anya, for being here, man. Uh, wonderful, and keep watching Night Jiu Jitsu channel.